Welcome to the Bible Believers Podcast. This is the show for truth seekers and defenders of biblical faith. I'm your host, Seth Koenig. I'm the pastor of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Chictawaga, New York. I've got <clears throat> Joe Horick, Brother Joe Horick, and I've got Mr. Meddy uh, with me. And we are uh, continuing in our podcast series on the spirit world. And uh, we've got some deep things to discuss. Um, in this podcast, gentlemen, and I've been looking forward to this particular podcast. Yeah. And I don't know how long it's going to take for us to get through the notes that we have in front of us. It might take a few podcasts, and then there's even more to follow. So even beyond what I've got in our notes, this is a very deep and broad subject matter. Uh, I think it's a subject matter that a lot of uh, Christians are afraid to talk about today, uh, particularly uh, Baptists. And... Um, but I'm willing to talk about it. Sure. And uh, we're, we're not charismatic. I don't want anybody to think that we're charismatic. In fact, we're going to be referring to um, a charismatic person in a book, and we will be referring to, well, I don't know if we'll get to him in this uh, particular podcast, but Dave Hunt as well, who would not be of our ilk. I mean, he uses a King James Bible. He's not a King James Bible believer, um, but he's got a lot of good information mm -hmm. out there. And um, I always am willing to read what a Christian has to say and then examine it according to the Word of God and see if there's anything that might be true there. So we left off doing um, podcast num number 18. It was called The Prince of Persia. And we really just very kind of tipped our, you know, the dip, or dip, <laughs> dipped the big toe into the water. <laughs> um, and just got ourselves situated here and began to pour a very thin foundation. We're going to pour a little bit more um, to this foundation. We are dealing with the spirit world. We are dealing with principalities and powers. And so here we are, Daniel chapter 10. This is where I'd like to begin. We left off with these verses uh, at the last podcast, and we'll come back around to it. Let's go ahead and read Daniel chapter 10. How about um, I will read the first uh, few verses, and then I'll have uh, Joe Horick, if you could pick up from verses 10, and read 10 through 13 once I've uh, given you the word. It's, okay, so in verse 1, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. When was the last time we mourned that long over things that were befalling our nation? Wow, yeah. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, <clears throat> neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. So what did he do there? Fasted. Fasted. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we're going to see the spirit world open up to this guy. Right. There, this, this is legitimate stuff. And we're, we're going to come back around eventually to fasting in the life of a believer and just what kind of spiritual implications it has. And I believe it has grand spiritual uh, uh, indications here. Um, and what we're dealing with now is Daniel praying, fasting, and he's waiting for an answer from the Lord. Of course, we have scripture today. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, not that he didn't have scripture, but we've got the, the, rep, the completed revelation of God. So when we pray and, and fast, then we are to set our eyes upon the word of God and um, pray mm -hmm. for the answers from, from the scripture. Daniel, unfortunately for him, he had signs and visions. 
So I say unfortunately very much on purpose because so many Christians are seeking signs and wonders and visions and miracles when you have the Bible. A more sure word of prophecy than right. a voice from heaven. Right, exactly. So, um, it, so here he is, he's waiting, and now the spirit world opens up to him because he was involved in the prayer and in the fasting, and Brother Joe, verses 10 through 13. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Boy, when was the last time we trembled before God's word, huh? Yeah. Wow. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to, to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Amen. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Okay, so well, Michael, we know, is he's the archangel. And he's referred to as Daniel's prince. So the prince of the people of Israel. Israel yeah. So then it's very obvious then here in context that what you're dealing with with the prince of the kingdom of Persia is you would be dealing with another angel, just one that would withstand Right. Um, Gabriel, who was who would be the messenger here, until Michael came to help him. So here, I mean, you think about this. There, the Lord sends an angel to answer Daniel's prayer, hmm. and he has to wait. What is it? About a month, thirty days, before the answer to that prayer. Not that it wasn't answered instantly; it was, but because a demonic spirit, an unclean spirit, met the um, clean spirit and the angel and they did battle until he had extra help he needed you know an extra you know it was one on one battle as far as I read until right. Michael showed up right. to give him a hand mm -hmm. but this wicked spirit was strong enough to keep Gabriel from going to Daniel this stuff and we ignore this type of stuff right. Right. because we don't want to be charismatic and we're not charismatic we're right. you know but I want to be a Bible believer Amen. the spirit world's real Amen. it can't be seen um, but it absolutely controls the things that go on in the seen world in right. the seen realm plays a very profound um, uh, a part in the history of the world I would say part of the history of the United States, yes. certainly Israel, yep. um, and and I've got in my notes that um, Persian theology actually has a reference to this angel, and he is referred to. This is I thought this this was interesting. Um, he is the, the the spirit known as, and I, I think I'm pronouncing this correctly, Ariman, Ariman. Uh, he's also referred to as Angra Mainyu, which means destructive spirit. But this is Persian theology. You know, I'm not saying it's Bible theology. Right, I'm yeah. saying it's Persian theology. Yeah. But they still have a reference to this prince that runs their region. And they refer to him as an angry spirit. I mean, Angra, that's the root of the word angry. It's right there in, in his name. And this Ariman, he's actually featured in a 2008 video game known as the Prince of Persia. Yeah. And that was something I don't know if it was um, uh, you know whether it's PlayStation or one of those games. I don't I've never played the game. I, I don't own the system, so yeah, If you it. look at uh, tribes and things like that and you look at the kind of spirits that they believe in, it's very telling to look at what plagues that region. I know and I I should have looked it up. I didn't think I was going to bring it up. But there was, uh, I saw it online, there was an Indian tribe, a Native mm -hmm. American tribe, where they were having suicide problems. Oh, okay. All their young people were committing suicide. And all of them talked about this ancient spirit that drove people to suicide. Mm. And it was well known in that region that that's that spirit that they believed in that walked through the woods and that they it met people and, and basically led them to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. right. And there's different things like that out there. And this 
Persian spirit that they're talking about is an angry spirit that they believe controls their region. Right. And it's interesting if you look into some of that stuff. It may not be right from the Bible, but the Bible makes it clear that there is a spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, it does us a disservice to completely ignore it. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've got to be careful not to delve too deep into it, but also don't be unaware that it's out there. Right. And I suppose maybe we, we may or may not get into a discussion on video games in particular, but certainly the, the influence that Hollywood has had and sure. television has sure. had upon sure. um, Americans and, and our youth in particular. But what of what of a video game that actually? I mean, it was I think I don't know the video game, never played it, but I'm I'm no, thinking he's the either. antagonist, he's sure. the bad guy in it. But it's called Prince of Persia. That's interesting. And Ariman is this wicked um, spirit that controls the region. That <laughs> I I don't know if it's the Prince of Persia that they claim is the good guy or right, what it is. Right, you know. Right. So forgive me for not knowing video games. I, I just don't. <laughs> But I did, I did hear of the Prince of Persia video game, and because I knew of that, I looked it up, and lo and behold, they've got this Ariman is in their video game, wow. and that is in Persian theology, this wicked spirit that they say is from the Bible. That's unbelievable. What do you guys think about a video game that would actually promote something like this? Yeah. Isn't that surprising? No, yeah. It's all over Hollywood. And it's also amazing. Entertainment. It almost seems as though Hollywood and the entertainment industry they seem to know a little bit more about the spirit world mm -hmm. than we do. Right. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I wonder where they're learning that from because most of them are not Bible believers. Right. Well, and the research is available. I mean, I was able sure. to look up yeah, some right. of this information. And, and that, I think, is probably one of the sure. big problems with Christians today is they're really very ignorant. Yeah. Sure. They're ignorant of Bible. They're ignorant mm -hmm. of history. They're ignorant of yeah. science. They're, they're ignorant of a host of things. And unfortunately, we end up looking like fools in the process before believing the Bible. Um, and we could talk about a number of different things in those regards, but we won't bother to waste our time with that today. And I didn't want to get into sure. video games yeah. in particular. I just wanted to reference that. That's and an we'll, example. Of, yeah, and know, we'll come back around, on. right? I mean, we'll come sure. back around to this. Um, what we're dealing with, this subject matter, charismatics love this stuff. I mean, they just eat this stuff up. Um, it's they're always running after signs. They're always running after miracles, um, and this spirit world. They're always you know looking for some sort of give me a sign, give me a sign. And brother Ed Luongo, who is sometimes on the podcast, I mean, he says you know you go looking for spirits, you'll find them. Right. That's right. Uh, and it's and it's true. But what spirits? Right. Sure. I mean, is it necessarily the Holy Spirit? We need to be careful, and I guess the, I'm just trying to bring this point up is that we don't just invite everything in because we think it's spiritual. Sure. We're supposed to try the spirits to see whether they be of God, um, and then again, we could end up as Baptists like we are, <laughs> and because we don't understand it, and we're probably afraid to deal with it, we don't. Right. I mean, are people still possessed today? Mm -hmm. Sure. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. I believe so. Okay. What do you do if you run into one? Well, charismatic be casting that cast people out <laughs> here and, you know, rebuking this unclean spirit sure. and rebuking that devil of that, you know, person. And, and, and then we Baptists go, well, we're not going to do anything. <laughs> Keep preaching Christ. Um, lift up the name of Jesus would be uh, probably the first thing I would want to do. But that seems to be where the devils come out, though. When you're out preaching, uh, preaching to Christ, the devils come out to try and stop it. They do. I've seen evidence of this. Uh, I had my own experiences even after preaching on the street corner. But well, I don't want to share all that just sure. now. But you know, we've, I've had some experiences. Mm -hmm. I've had some run-ins with what I believe um, were spirits and the spirit world. So, And with demoniacs. Not a lot, thank you. The Lord, I haven't had a whole lot of experience. I hope I don't have a whole lot of experience. I wonder if even reading and researching the material for this podcast and for future podcasts hasn't had a spiritual effect. Sure. And again, Brother Ed brought it up. You know, he said, what about, you've been sick a lot lately. How do you know it's not this? And he's pointing to these books that I'm reading and videos that I'm watching and the research that I'm doing. How do we know? You don't know 
Unclean spirits can be responsible for illnesses. You say, well, you can't be possessed. I don't believe I can be possessed, but I don't know that that has anything to do with possession. Right. Just yeah. influence. Influence. Yeah. Uh, and our bodies are physiological. There's a spiritual element to them and there's a physical element yeah. to it. And you can't say the one does not affect the other. It absolutely does. Yeah. So if I'm doing something to my spirit man, it is possible that it manifests itself in a physical um, malfunction. Sure. Sure, it's possible. Mm -hmm. so, oh, we'll cast the devil out. Why? Well, I wasn't given the authority to do that. The apostles were. I said, well, you got to take that authority. Well, and that, and we'll get into charismatic doctrine and, and the church right. and. And man, oh man, do I have a, even, a, I've got a story. But we're not doing it right now. Yeah. But just keep watching the podcast. Just some of these experiences and the things that I'm hearing from other people. Sure. It's unbelievable. Well, even, even to add on to what Seth was saying, studying for this stuff. You know, he, he gave me one of these books to read. And I told him, I think I was on a Wednesday night service. I'm like, some of this is kind of creepy. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Yeah. And, and I was reading it before bed or something. You know, <laughs> that's real smart. <laughs> but, you know, but you get into some of the stuff. But it's important because... Yeah, that's a good book, but this is a better book. Yes, amen. And and the Jesus of this Bible has amen. my soul, so yeah. right. I uh, you know cling to this, but it's good to know about this stuff because it enough is. Christians don't. The Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices, right. of Satan's devices. The problem is we are. The Bible's not wrong. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what it's saying is we have here the information that we need. And therefore, we're not ignorant of his devices if we heed to God's word and if we actually read it and actually study it. Right. Well, and I but, think he was actually referring to himself and his, and his fellow apostles at that time as well. True. Yes. And as an example of what we ought not be. I mean, because he does go on to say, be, don't be ignorant. Right. 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 So, yeah, but go ahead and finish your but thought. We, but we don't have to be ignorant. Yet at the same time, you want to be very careful about getting into this stuff. And mm. again, you don't know the kind of effects. Prayerfully, it right? right. So, right. Yeah. I mean, I, I've considered that a number of times, even in reading, and went, wait a minute, stop, pray, you know, mm. um, fast. Fasting, of course. You know, that type of thing. Um, but it's, it's real. They're formidable foes. Whether we like it or not, we're in a spiritual battle with them. I'd rather not be, but I am. And um, and I, the battlefield, this is what I want to talk about, because the battlefield's got kind of two fronts. Yeah. And the first one starts um, with the spiritual, and I call it the battle for the kingdom of God. Uh, first of all, what is the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of God? I'll ask you guys. The spiritual realm. God's spirit. The kingdom of God is within you. Yes, right. it cannot be observed as the kingdom of heaven can be right. observed. The kingdom physical. of heaven is physical. And might you have gotten that from the word of God? Yes. Of okay, <laughs> from the words of Jesus Christ, it's Luke 17, verse 21, right here in our notes. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is the spirit realm. It's, it's the realm, um, when, how it, it touches and affects man cannot be seen with the naked eye, but it affects the mind and the heart. Yep. And um, the will, and that's really how we can tap into it is, is our will. I became a child of God because I willed that Jesus saved me. Mm -hmm. He's will, he is willing to save all, but I had to be willing to let him. Right. I had to receive him, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So, and, that's, and that is a huge... Um, disconnect in the Christian world because people think kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, same thing, and they're not. Yeah. Kingdom of God is the spiritual realm. There is also then a battlefield in the kingdom of heaven, which is the physical realm. But it begins in the kingdom of God and translates down to the kingdom of heaven. And of course you say, well, what's the difference between kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven? Because so many people think it's the same thing. It's not the no. same thing. And here's more proof. Matthew 11. You got Matthew 11 yep. in front of you, the verse 12? And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Okay, so if the kingdom of heaven is the same thing as the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God can't be seen, well, how can the violent take the kingdom of God or heaven by force? <laughs> Two different. Either the Bible is mistaken, which I absolutely refuse to believe. I've been, re I've been reading it far too many years. Can't be. 
or it means what it says it means. Right. And kingdom of God is not kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven is not kingdom of God. Words mean things. Yeah. And so one of them, kingdom of heaven, is a physical one. It suffers violence. It's taken by force. You see it. Nations rising up against nations. Kingdoms against kingdoms. Wars. Rumors of wars. All those things that Jesus talked about in particular heading towards the tribulation and then through the tribulation. But they have a starting ground. And it's in the spirit realm, just like we're reading about here with the um, book of Daniel. The, the, how did it start? Spirit, Daniel was doing spiritual things, praying and fasting. Right. Yep. And he had a spiritual response to that prayer. But it needed to manifest itself in the earthly realm. And in, the, in that time, trying to get to the earthly realm, Gabriel was held in the spirit yep. realm by, the, by that unclean spirit until he was able to break through with Michael's help and to get here, isn't it? This so is, Gabriel whew. needed help. He needed help. Yeah. But Gabriel. But Benny Hinn can help. bind the spirit. <laughs> here we go. Not to get off topic. No, no, no. But you but see, that's the kind of stuff. Who that you are, are in so Christ? Weird. That's what yeah. they say. You know, you don't understand the authority you have in Christ. Uh, that was a good job. <laughs> angel, angels. <laughs> I wouldn't want to meet an angel in a corner, you know, or in a dark alley or whatever. Not a good one or a bad one. Right. Because I would quake. I would tremble in their presence. Just like Daniel did. Yes. But, but, we, to say we have this authority, wow. <laughs> That's, um, that is ignorance of scripture. Yeah. It's dismissal of the power of the God of this world. Yeah. And I'm not trying to toot any horn because, well, my God's better than that God. Right. Um, but the God of this world is not Jesus Christ. Right. Not according to Scripture. Not according to a King James Bible. He Some will be. Versions. I mean, he will be. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, he's got to take the throne. He hasn't taken the throne. Right. He's not in Jerusalem. He's not sitting on the throne. All that stuff that he talked about was not spiritual only. He's physically going to return. He's right. physically Amen. going to take that throne. Just like we may be a picture of spiritual Israel, but he's coming back for physical Israel. He is going to set his throne back Amen. up. The 12 tribes of Israel have not been abandoned. The Amen. Lord did not put them off permanently. He set them aside. Romans 9, 10, and 11, he's coming back to them. Right. He's going to eventually marry us and his work with us will be done because we'll be perfected. And he's going to go back to the kingdom of heaven and deal with that realm. All the principalities and powers, these w wicked men in high places, running wicked governments. And that's what we're dealing with here. That's what Satan is controlling. Right. Governors, legislators, presidents, popes, dictators religious men and leadership, they are all affected by the God of this world and his host. Yeah, see, Jesus said that he would build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's the kingdom of heaven, or kingdom of God, I'm sorry. But the kingdom of heaven, that is being ruled by the devil. That sure is, is being ruled by the prince of, uh, the prince of Persia, the, the sure. powers of the air. You know, it, it's not... Um, the violent take it by force. It's, it's. They are two totally different things. The kingdom right. of God, kingdom of heaven, and and that's what people don't realize. But we don't, as Christians, we. I guess I would just continue to stress that we can't be ignorant. Uh, you know, a lot of times people say, "Oh, God is in control," <laughs> in the sense that He's not out of control. Right. <laughs> but right. there's some other people that are other beings that are in control of this world right now. Right. God is. Fully in control of himself as he relinquishes control of the earth to Satan. Yeah. Or of this world, I should say, to Satan, not the earth. And there's a difference there, even. World, spiritual. Sure. Earth, physical. And, it's the same, and this is the reason yeah. why the Jew crucified Jesus Christ. Because Jesus came offering the spiritual first, but they wanted a governmental, right. physical ruler. They wanted the king of Israel to, to knock down the Roman Empire and to take yeah. the throne. Just like so many Christians today. Yeah. Carnally minded. Yep. Just focused on the things of this earth. Yep. 
and miss and missing the things of God. Yeah. That's right. Well, how many Christians don't even, like you said earlier, don't even realize the difference between the kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven? Right. Or even realize, you know what I mean? They just I've read mentioned that to thing. people, and you they get the deer like in headlights yeah. look. Mm. You get what? They're not the same. Yeah, what are you talking about? Poor teaching. Poor poor doctrine. Right. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, we're, we're trying to cut these podcasts down to a decent time. <laughs> we understand that an hour and a half, you are not going to watch an hour and a half. I've done the analytics on these on the podcasts, and the average view of any video I have ever see, ever put out there has been 10 minutes. Maybe that's a hint for me to stop recording <laughs> and doing these videos. No, really, and it's, it, it is, it's indicative of the attention span sure. of modern people. And busyness. And busyness. We're all yeah. got something to do. Maybe we can only get 10 minutes at a time. So that's fine. So we're going to try to keep these low.